For Bermuda, winning the bid was merely step one. Bermuda had just over two years to prepare to host one of the world's most prestigious sporting events. We were one of only six countries to ever host the world's oldest sporting trophy. With the world watching, we had stepped onto the big stage, and with our reputation on the line, we had to deliver. I always compare the ACBDA to that wonderful kid story of the little engine that could, uh, because every time somebody said to me, you're never going to do it, I just got more stubborn, which of course everybody recognizes as a trait of mine, uh, and said, yes, we will. We had to break through that inertia. We had to break through that barrier, said, no, this is happening. It's happening by this date. And if we don't deliver, we'll look terrible. Uh, and so uh, part of it was really trying to reframe the psyche of everybody involved in this to say, how do we get to yes? How do we say, yeah, this is what it will take to make it work, as opposed to these are the 10 reasons why it can't possibly work. There were people that were working from every uh, possible cross-section of Bermuda that were working again towards that same goal. They were building things. They were constructing nine acres of land that didn't exist in a way that had never done, been done before. That nine acres was, of course, a man-made island in the south basin of Duckyard which would, in effect, be the stage from which Bermuda would showcase itself to the world. And full credit to Bermuda, full credit to the government, uh, to the ACBDA, and, and of course to the management team at, at WEDCO um, for having the vision um, and the guts to commit to that project. Even I looked at it when it was finished and was like, that thing's magnificent. It's the, the, the mind work around just from starting from nothing and coming up with an island that supported um, over 10,000 people on a given day, that's nothing to shake a stick at. That, that's a phenomenal feat. In the beginning, uh, when, when we were standing there and saying, imagine an event village uh, 30 months from now where you see water today uh, with corporate hospitality structures and team bases and media compounds and so on. That was a pretty, pretty decent bridge to have to cross. Uh, can we produce the engineering and technical solution in time? And then can we source the, the, uh, the granite and the, and the materials to fill 10 acres? And then can we, can we get ships the size that have never been in and out of the dockyard before in there? So as we began to break through each of those milestones, just by problem solving, uh, finding a challenge, getting the right kind of people in a room to solve for that, uh, it both built momentum, but it also created these inflection points where all of a sudden you think, wow, now we have to get, you know, 300, 400,000 cubic yards of granite out of Nova Scotia in January. What if the rivers freeze up and you can't get the ships in and out? I mean, so, you know, there were these inflection points where the risk profile changed. Now, all of a sudden, as we filled 10 acres, you know, and we got that done, you sort of say, whew, you know, that was a great accomplishment, but actually we're nowhere near the finish line. Reaching that finish line meant Bermudians and Bermuda businesses being ready and able to deliver products and services at a scale and scope previously unheard of here. For both the event organizers and those local businesses, this meant a huge commitment in time that taxed their energy and challenged their creativity, tested their courage and determination. Um, my role was to connect local businesses and entrepreneurs to the America's Cup, um, which sounds like a simple enough task. And when they actually dug, when we actually dug into that, it was actually preparing Bermuda for the America's Cup as it related to being a local business and an entrepreneur. We had resources in place like the BEDC, um, Bermuda Chamber of Commerce. There were different resources that we put into place to help people figure out how do I expand the magnitude of my business to accommodate this type of event. I believe that uh, the flower industry was probably the best example. They had a very unique opportunity because of the um, super yachts. And um, when you have a super yacht come in and ask for $10,000, $20,000 worth of flowers, we're not used to providing that magnitude. So just in preparation to be able to meet that need, that industry had to bring in probably more refrigerated containers. They had to completely figure out a structure that would easily be able to be disbanded afterwards because you don't need that structure once they leave. 
I sat on the security committee. I actually started um, in December of last year of 2016. And from that point, we was having meetings very often. It's almost like a wedding. You have to do so much planning and preparation before, and you think, oh, the wedding went off without a hitch. It was a great day. But honestly, it was so much planning late nights. It was weekends. It was a lot of joint agency training on the weekends. So whilst it may have looked easy and simple and slick, I, we, we fell down a few times before we was able to get up and walk strongly. They needed somebody for the October series to sort of handle the event television. It was a two-day event, the weekend event, where they had all the vendors on Front Street. So all the televisions all around Front Street, we had control of all that. And it was a lot. Um, we had our equipment there, and our equipment was basically being pushed to the max. Like, every input, output was used. That was my first major, I guess, test of courage and can you handle the pressure. One particular instance I can remember is where uh, the, the producer says to me, Lamont, two minutes to world feed. And this is from the, the world feed coming through us to go to all the TVs. So he's sweating and our system sort of crashed. And he said, Lamont, are we ready? And I had to look him in his eye and I really didn't know what to say. I said, give me two minutes, I'll get it working. Not knowing how or what was even the problem yet. And he says to me, you have one minute. And I don't know how it happened, but you know how miracles happen when you're under pressure. We got it working. He, three, two, one. And we was on the world feed and everybody could relax. And another Bermudian who experienced firsthand the pressure of this big event was Shane Moore, the branding manager for the 35th America's Cup and the World Series events preceding it. It was an intense role that was integral in shaping the commercial success of the America's Cup and the experience of those who attended it. I'd venture to say that we probably put in about 10 months of work in terms of productivity and output in that five months in order to make the event happen. Because if you think about it, up until November 2016, we were still working on the World Series. The team was uh, very entrenched in producing and delivering those events. The America's Cup racing is officially underway. Who'd have ever thought you'd have crowds like this at a sailboat race? There's the gun, all clear. This is gonna be very tight. They're within inches, going 30 knots right now. Fantastic race. Oh, is this close? My goodness. Oh, they've run into a mark boat. After a massive collision, Artemis Racing takes the race. Here we go. What a race and what a start. intense in, in that a lot of hours were put in, a lot of time, uh, a lot of late nights here. Our Nespresso machine was pretty much a background noise here in the office. It was buzzing all the time. Zzz, somebody's making espresso to you know, keep, keep the juice going. Um, we sacrificed a lot, a lot of time, time away from home um, to be spent on the project, but that's, that's the event world. You're facing down a, a project pipeline that um, has a lot of moving parts to it, a lot of uh, players involved, stakeholders that you have to work with. You have to be able to be flexible and adapt to something that might totally put to the side something you've been working on for two months. And what that meant was that there's no time to dwell on any loss, a loss of time or a loss of plans. You've been working on something, but there's a change now. Um, the event 
uh, stage has moved from this side of the village to that side of the village. The opening ceremony is now happening by the water. All kinds of changes happen and just need to dive right into developing the solution for the new plan and be able to throw some of your best ideas to the side to develop other new ones. And sometimes those new ideas end up being just as great as well. I think Bermuda did great on the world stage. Um, from preparing for the event with the project for the infill and dockyard in Cross Island uh, through to the, all of the local vendors that worked to help build that site uh, from um, asphalt to trenching to concrete uh, to electricians and communications. Everybody was involved um, in delivering that project. And then once the event opened, the Bermuda vendors that were present, um, I think they were able to showcase um, you know, great Bermudian food. Um, we had amazing Bermudian talent on the stage, which was managed and procured by a Bermuda team. Um, so all in all, um, including the people that worked on the America's Cup, on the ACEA organization and in the ACBDA, um, everybody did an amazing job, I think, and it was a big learning opportunity. And I would love to be able to work with um, some of the people on this team again on future projects.